the oldest soldier chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel Byrd, and our youngest soldier, Private Andrew Quevado, to come forward to cut a birthday cake. Scenes from Club Mead and this year's Army Heritage Observance, the cutting of the traditional Army birthday cake. More from the observance in a moment. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week we meet with a 101-year-old World War II vet. MWR opens the Java Cafe and an update on this year's red, white, and blue celebration. But first, the U.S. Army Field Band and the Fort Meade Equal Opportunity Office hosted this year's Army Heritage Observance on the Army's 247th birthday. Ceremonies included recognition of the Army's living history in the form of 101-year-old World War II veteran William Keyes. I'm glad to, to be here to honor you, such wonderful, brave men who died before us, and a lot of them who still died. And I think we should all pay attention to those that, are, that came back from the different wars. We may not have won them entirely, but we got them, we got good people. So thank you so much for taking up my attention and my time. <laughs> We'll have more with Mr. Keyes in a moment. Meanwhile, the guest speaker was the Commanding General Joint Task Force National Capital Region and Army Military District of Washington, Major General Alan Pepin. Our shared values are part of who we are as soldiers and Department of the Army civilians. Our values provide our North Star and help us build and uphold the trust of the American citizens and our nation's leaders. As we celebrate Army Heritage Day, let us remember those who fought before us some who gave their lives or were wounded and live with those wounds for the remainder of their lives. Their families who had to endure that sacrifice. The event concluded with the traditional cake cutting and the singing of the Army song. As I mentioned a moment ago, I had a chance to sit down with World War II vet William Keyes at his home in Annapolis. We talked in his home office, which over the years has become something of a museum, holding artifacts and pictures going back to the 1930s. Certificates line the walls, recognizing Keyes as more than 70 years of military and public service. As we look through the photos, Keyes talked about his time in the Army and the 761st Tank Battalion. They were short of tank men. I don't know too much about tanks. I didn't at the time, but they needed a 50 caliber man. And so they said, so 50 caliber, so they pushed me in the tank. Wow. That, which was the best thing that ever happened to me. As far as the service was concerned, because I had to learn everything from basic, from from guys, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. So, we went all through Germany, and we went to Poland, as far as Poland, 761st, went from uh, uh, Bastogne, right out of St. Fifth, Bastogne, right on across to Czechoslovakia. It was 82 days, I think it was. There's much more of our conversation with Keys on an upcoming episode of our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified. Stay tuned. In other news, Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland announced this week that this year's red, white, and blue celebration will be a fireworks-only event, and attendance will be limited to DOD ID card holders that have access to the installation. While there won't be any vendors, families can set up canopies and lawn chairs. Food is allowed, but no barbecue grills. Dogs are allowed on a leash, However, we discourage bringing dogs because of the noise of the fireworks. The event is on Friday, July 1st, with the fireworks scheduled to start after sunset, somewhere between 9 and 9.30. Elsewhere, NWR held the official grand opening of the new Java Cafe this week. It's located just inside the main entrance of Kimbrough. Besides coffee, the cafe features light breakfast and lunch items. MWR Chief of Business Operations Scott Meyer says the project faced multiple delays. We were looking for some opportunities to expand the offerings on MWR and we came up with the idea of adding a Java Cafe. We finally, we were able to, to get the project moving forward, um, worked with the team here at Kimbrough, um, and last month we were finally able to, to open and provide this cafe to the, the staff and patrons here at Kimbrough. So it's been a long time in the making, but we look forward to, to serving the community. The cafe isn't just for Kimbrough staff and patients. Short-term parking is being set up in the Horseshoe driveway so you can run in, get your fix, and be on your way. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.